Sé que de lo bajo, sé que de lo bajo, un guanio te dejo yo sé que le. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Ashen Forge. I am Phantom X, joined as always by Diggs and the legendary neurotoxin. That background is just going to mess with me this whole time. Uh, I love it. How are y'all doing? Great. Doing good. Great, great. That uh, live stream. Uh, it's a desert, everybody. <laughs> now, there's a couple of things I'm going to say about that real quick. The first part they showed looks like approximately a, a range between zero to two hours between um, where the office is at and uh, approximately Arizona. That sort of hard chaparral going into the uh, the 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 br bluffs in the desert there with the suaro cacti. That's um, that's seems like close territory especially because there's all the water and the, the the stuff running through it then as it gets a little bit further you get into the sandy desert and so for me that one's kind of funny because it's like wait so we're going from um southern california and you know like the 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 very far part of southern california going to arizona and now all of a sudden we're in um death valley essentially it's like all right i don't know how this work i just made it here but fine you know <laughs> um but uh, it's it's really well done they're they're lush deserts it's not just you know sand as far as the eye can see and a couple you know cacti doing one of these pose because or you probably can't see it like a one of these pose uh, <laughs> just because that's the only cactus everybody knows and the only way a desert anybody knows because uh we watched uh cartoons made by warner brothers and and disney as kids and they're not sponsors i'm in fact blaming them for teaching everybody that uh a sandy desert with dunes with swaro cacti is somehow all deserts everywhere maybe it's true in toontown but that's not the rest of the world in fact, that that desert doesn't exist in the world. Of course, we're talking about Vera, so things are fantastical. So it's not like I'm trying to like put their feet to the flames about the floor and stuff. It's well, America is all that matters in any case, right? They're going to do the same thing with holidays. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it was it was interesting in the comments for the uh, the YouTube video for the desert uh, preview. Someone said, "I live in Botswana, and I got to say, you absolutely nailed like the." arid desert sort of look you know looks great you know something along those lines it's like sweet you know that's that's further validation you know good job team the and the tools that they showed off in those videos uh that was really good stuff that's that's my kind of tools and it's also i like the fact that they're such a tools heavy sort of company uh it very much sounds like if someone on the team needs a tool for something that tool is provided to them that's a pretty big deal. Like that's that's really really helpful in game development. Um, somebody having a tool to make sure they don't make mistakes and can automate certain processes, or in this case, even work together in a similar shared space without having to load and save and manage a whole bunch of wacky files and and diffs and stuff. That's fantastic. So the fact that they've got all the tools streamlined and stuff. And the fact that they were saying they're trying to get it efficient enough that it'll play on like a 10 series graphics card that even though it's Unreal 5 engine, they're still trying to maximize the um, the range of systems that can still play it. So who knows? Maybe this potato will be able to run at super min spec. One thing I thought uh, was amusing to me about the tools um, 
there was uh, an artist who used to work for New World um, who was saying that um, uh, he liked being able to have tools that could be made for them that can actually allow them to work faster, which seems not to be the case that we heard for New World. Um, not only from him, but also from others. <laughs> so that was kind of interesting. But the coolest part of him saying that was that um, I think he said, well, no, maybe it was the guy who last worked on um, in the film industry who was saying that he was thinking he'd always wanted to do art for MMORPGs, but he thought that he would not be able to do it because he didn't know how their would be tools to be able to do that for MMORPGs. And he's most recently been working on film. Um, and uh, he's been doing this kind of work on film. And then when he started working uh, recently at Intrepid Studios, he was thinking, yeah, I want to do some of this stuff, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. But then they made the tools for him to be able to do it. That's just super awesome. It says something really great about working at the studio itself, I think. So making so many tools specific to UE5, like what are, do you think there's any motivation to sell or lease these things later? I want to put a little stop on that. Yes, they're being made for UE5, but they're more specifically being made for their engine and their tech and their background and their, you know, all the things that they've done for all I know, they they've utilized the fact that you can get down to the core level and change things about the engine at a very like very deep and detailed level. And they've done that a lot to the point where it might not even be recognizable as Unreal 5 engine in terms of, you know, open a default project and then diff check the two and see like, wow, you know, all these features are completely different and completely changed up to work for this project in a very specific way. So if that's the case, then I don't know that the tools they're making right now would actually be portable to other Unreal 5 projects unless everything is, in fact, generalized and specific, uh, you know, not that specific to a bunch of specific tools and parts uh, that they could actually, you know, sell it around, share it around, port it or whatever. It seems like it would be more of a full kit sort of thing that you wouldn't be getting access to one tool or another. You would be getting access to the entire suite of tools and the engine itself if you were a third party that was going to license it or if, um, I don't know, something ridiculous happened and Tencent bought it because they wanted to make uh, uh all the all the best mmos and it's like all right so we're just gonna buy the company that did it and then you know make spawn clones off of it but, which i don't i don't really think is gonna happen um i mean it seems like a from the way they described it it could be a highly utilized uh tool or service should that be possible um being able to sort of bypass two or three other external programs and just create would uh, sounds actually quite uh, dreamy for I'm sure for the artist. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. <laughs> the less you have to import stuff, the less you have to move things back and forth and guess and check. Oh yeah, that uh, that is big stuff. Yeah, and thinking about uh, making tools to help you work the way you want to work. The same thing is kind of true on Vera in a world with high magic. Um, you can uh, possibly make it so that you can grow the things in the desert that you want to grow, even though they wouldn't normally grow there. So um, there was a uh, faction, um, the Verdant Keepers, who... Uh, were kind of druids, druid-like people um, that did that on Vera. They kind of had to uh, um, adjust their tactics once they moved over to Sanctus. Um, but um, they were the ones who kind of looked around to make sure that 
people would have the crops that they wanted to grow and grow the stuff that they wanted to grow. So, you know, on Earth, we might not expect to see certain types of cactus in certain places. But um, if you have the right magic, you might be able to nudge that in different ways. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I hope that in that biome, I'm sure we can grow things. But uh, because, you know, I'm sure there'll be freeholds and whatnot, uh, you know, but I would hope especially when we talk regional differences, regional markets, that each biome has its own type, um, that it's not so easy. I, don't, I wouldn't say impossible that you could, say, grow an orange tree in the desert, I'm sure, if you had the right tools. Um, maybe it would be very hard to do so, but I would hope that there's actual just differences within the crops, within the animals that we breed, um, so that yeah. there is this sort of regional perspective. And, you know, someone was asking um, today, this morning, I think, about mounts and whether or not um, mounts might have, uh, you know, some might be more acclimated to, oh, because of the snail um, that we The snorse. The snorse, yeah. Um, oh, they were God. saying, you know, they were surprised to see a snorse in the desert. Um, and so maybe uh you know a snorse might work better i don't know where they're thinking in a forest or something like that more water um than um in a desert uh, so maybe it would move faster in a forest than it would move in a in a desert um and uh but that kind of thing you know some attributes would of the mounts would be better in different biomes um and we might expect something like that, I suppose, of crops as well. I don't know that I would expect um, orange fruit with tons of, you know, that are super big and have tons of water in them. We might see uh, those little, like, I'm thinking tangerines in my head, I think, but um, those little tiny, like, crab tangerines um, mm -hmm. might be what grow in a desert, but you're able to do it. Sure, it's the quality might not be as great in the desert as it might be in a more yeah, you know if you're able to get enough um, water and shade, it probably would be able to do fine anywhere. Yeah, I'm just saying that 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 we just could find that it's just more difficult and the quality is different. Yeah, uh, and we know well that's for sure because they have said that you know influences from uh, biome and how weather affects biomes and stuff will. Uh, will have an impact for sure. Yeah, I mean, and we know, or we're, we've been told our areas um, will have different influences, right? So if you're next to a stream, you have a little bit easier watering. So I'm curious if there'll be something similar uh, in a, a desert biome or setting that I don't know, being in a certain area gives you benefits at different times of crops. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Also it depends on what, kind of desert you're in because again if it's the part they showed earlier in the video that had a lot of streams it was coastal it had you know plenty of water plenty of access to water but the second half they showed yeah that's um that place seemed like you're gonna have a hard time doing anything water related just because it's gonna be so scarce it's gonna evaporate quickly uh it's gonna be hard to get it through precipitation um you know it it makes me wonder if some of the desert areas are going to be so bereft of water that there will literally just be water caravans coming from nearby water sources to to keep them going yeah there's a tv show that i was watching this past week i think it's called evolve and it's um kind of focused on biodiversity especially how we might try to move towards extraterrestrial um, living colonies. And they went, I think it was Nairobi. They went to a desert in Nairobi where um, it's the habitat, the largest population of seals. And the host was like, how do you have so many seals on a desert? Like, this is a desert, but it's, you know got a sea on the sides 
he was like, it seems very strange that, you know, a desert would be where the seals are <laughs> on land. And that's the highest population of seals since they spend so much time in the ocean. But no, I'd cer- I would possible. certainly hope we have multiple deserts, too, and that each desert has its own sort of yeah. setup, not just one yeah, yeah. biome yeah. that sort of transitions across the biome. But And uh, this is uh, something I've kind of been thinking there's likely going to be some mix and combination of uh, near water source and not near a water source, whether it's coastal or inland, of um, each biome type to some extent for each of the different node types like it would be really weird for example if um science nodes never appeared in deserts for example um so i'm just thinking about the distribution of where all of the node types are going to be relative to the different regions of different uh biomes since the the node types don't change it's always going to be that type um it they're going to have to make sure that it's mixed up and diverse it's going to really be kind of crappy if some um uh biome types some of the region types are never going to be optimal for a um or never be placed in, a, in an area where it'd be optimal for a certain race to build up and put down the roots and, and get the best bonuses i don't know how they're going to resolve that uh it'll be it'll be interesting to see how do they do the distribution and then i also consider how much of this is above ground nodes and how much of it's the underground nodes and those are going to have their own biomes too uh <laughs> so uh there's there's a lot to um a lot to work with and sort out to make sure that everything feels fair and responsibly distributed. So all of the um, combinations of uh, node types and biomes and access to water are represented. Here's caravans. Now that we've seen weather systems, now that we've seen a desert environment, you know, I'm, I'm curious what it will be like if you have to go uh, get your items from one place to another and you have to trans you have to go through a desert maybe not the entire way but you sort of cross through whether that influences any part of that caravan the mounts the way it's transported um the same with weather systems you know i assume the world will have areas that are more stormy than others so you know, if you're transporting by ship, I, I would assume there'll be ship care, the equivalent caravans. I guess that that's ever been asked. Has that been talked about? Um, uh, ship ship based caravans or caravans that do some by land and ocean. And, yeah, or both. Yeah. Just transporting sort of through a through sea. You know, yeah. that's a damn good question. There are, uh, naval, ca- there are naval caravans. Yes. OK, uh, that because I'm, I'm seeing these sorts of things. I'm curious how that will now work out. If you're not just preparing for the player characters attacking you, but now do you have to also um, essentially like a survival aspect, but on a more macro sort of level per se? That would be interesting. I wonder how they would communicate that, what sort of things they would impose, and then also why these things weren't anticipated with the path ahead of time because when you're setting up to do a caravan it isn't just this slapdash all right i'm gonna throw my crap in a uh uh a barrel and and slap it to a horse and get going it's this whole thing where it's all chartered out and you get a driver and there's all these different facets and elements and insurance and stuff to it and then when that finally gets formally launched then it gets going um that's uh it's um i was going somewhere with that uh the 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 idea that you're just going to go through the desert all willy-nilly that you didn't anticipate that you're going through the desert and that it's going to be hot as hell because you didn't anticipate what season is currently at and how close you are to the 
uh, the season ending weather event, whatever apocalyptic thing that's going to be that ushers in the next season, you know, just to make sure you aren't hitting the hottest part of the summer right when you're trying to cross through the desert. Um, you know, you would have charted that stuff out and planned it ahead of time. So and, and I, I don't know how much that stuff's going to affect, but maybe like a speed bonus or disadvantage for terrain well, or better or worse in. That's just I'm curious because we don't know a ton about it. And we, we're know we're learning more, I guess, because the question for the stream was the YouTube question was about caravans. Uh, I'm asking as a as a crafter or artisan, will I be able to give my goods to someone else and have them transport it to the market or will I have to participate in a caravan? <clears throat> the answer was they've decided to allow someone else to transport for you um, and that there will be some sort of insurance or something that you can purchase from that individual if they make it available um, in case they lose. So that will be interesting. Um, I'm curious how the insurance market will work, but. Yeah, I, well, it's it's part of what they're saying with like, you know, this goes back to what they were saying in the uh, the one from uh, June where they're talking about your reputation as a caravaneer, as a driver, as a caravan raider, as a persistent record that that goes and follows you. Where if you're somebody who, you know, you're known for getting it done, maybe it's that it's just something your guild specializes in. And every time you guys run caravans, you run high profile caravans because you bring a tough coordinated crew that is going to be able to resist attack. Plus, whatever hired on NPCs and mercenaries to help uh, help out. Uh, I For some reason, I imagine like half the players in the crew being healers just so they can mass aoe heal all of the npcs and keep them up and fighting um that's uh however the tactics work themselves out though um i can see how somebody like that who's got a special relationship with somebody might be able to set up the contract and do it without insurance and it's not a problem if I'm a guild that doesn't know anyone else in the area and I've got to get this big old pile of iron that we've been stashing in this side spot for however long and need to get to our main spot. Um, but, you know, we're going to really lose out if uh, if it doesn't get there. Well, you know, we put a, a hefty little insurance on it. If it doesn't make it, then we'll get however much money. It's not going to make up for the entire loss of the material, but at least, you know, we're not completely out everything. Um, and likewise, as the driver who's putting up for it, it's like, all right, you know, I I bet 1000 gold that I can get this 500 iron from point A to point B is essentially kind of the the deal they're making, the the, the side of the agreement they're going in with. So if that's how it works out and, you know, neither party truly trusts one another, but um, the the driver feels like they can cover the risk, likely not knowing what the actual payload is, that it would be stupid to let them know so they don't, you know, just have their buddies ambush or whatever, maybe some details or whatever. Um, and then also the guild who doesn't necessarily trust anybody, but they need someone who's going to be a driver. So, you know, somebody who's going to be able to cover uh, at least some of the cost if they lose out. So that's that's kind of how I see it working out. And that's why that reputation will actually matter. It will carry along if you're if you're known, you're you're the, the caravan crew, you're the uh, the the ones that are just, you know, caravan couriers anywhere in the server. You can be trusted to do that. Yeah. You're going to be getting those contracts left and right. You're going to be paying lower on the insurance, or maybe you're even going to pay higher on the insurance, knowing that you're going to get the thing there. And so you can take gargantuan contract as a result. Um, you know, it's that's the sort of logistics that I'm really eager to see, because that's going to play a lot in the gameplay and those reputations sticking with people. It's going to be a big deal when it comes to um, like 
bigger trades and bigger deliveries as you're getting more towards the the city and metropolis level and that's the level of resources that you're dealing with mm -hmm. make it easy you don't buy the insurance i'll just have some guild members come and attack the caravan <laughs> i'll get it from you either way i wonder if there'd be a reason to do that to set things up i know they're banking on the idea that your reputation uh you know if you do something like that uh, your reputation will prevent people from using you um but uh yeah i think they have measures in place to prevent that kind of exploit stuff but i don't remember the specifics of it offhand well i wonder if it's the sort of thing where you, you'll still accumulate some like experience and rapport even if you fail but you got it to a certain point and then what you're getting on your qualification is like, oh yeah, I've I've led 500 caravans. Only about 50 of them made it, but damn it, you know I've lost more caravans than you'll ever do. So just hire me. I've got experience. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right. In, in in chat, you mentioned the uh, legs. On that oh, horse. the mount. Where did they go? That mount just drives me absolutely I love crazy. it so much. Oh, I and it. I love I how I it. love how excited Maggie is about it every time it comes up. And then she's like, you know, I just mixed some things together and it turned out. It's like, yeah, that one's wacky. I that love it. Absolutely I, goofy. I absolutely loved it until I saw the legs. The legs uh, drive me nuts. Uh, I'm sure because it's not naturally a thing. I'm just thinking, where do they go when it's all that? Mm -hmm. they're, Does they're it have kinda... like doors like an airplane, like that the skin just opens up and the legs go up inside? And then no, I guess it's I, the I, same I, place that dolphin junk go. I don't know. It's what? it's for me. I expect that they're like fluid filled appendages, like they they're bones. air sacs. They had bones. Well. You know, it, it, even with that, they can be very, very gooey and just, you know, fluid and air kind of inflates them and pops them out. And then the bones are there to help kind of no. hold things. It's just the then, legs that you know, They just suck it back in or whatever. It's is it, just is it, like. Is it bones or cartilage? Is it? I don't know what it Bones is. Or cartilage. Oh, that is a good question to stand on. That's I. That's again yeah. why I was just going with the idea that it's um, fluid filled, fluid and air filled sacks. I don't know we're thinking. <laughs> How long you been watching, dear? I'm gonna, you know, I'm very practical. I have to understand these things. Yeah. No, uh, Non-Newtonian fluid. I like I, that. I, I love the snail part, though. That that even even being in the desert, which is going to drive me nuts, just from a fluid standpoint. Um, I would love to have that going through the uh, forest. That'd be awesome. Somehow, I guess it's like a camel and it sucks it up all in its shell. That's what it looks like. Like, <laughs> like the, the, the shell is the water-filled canopy. For okay. Me. Sorry to burst your bubble on that one. That's actually a fat hump. Their, their blood cells are able to hold way more water than humans. That's why they're able to drink up a storm. No, I don't. I'm, not I'm talking saying about camels. Is, yeah, I know. I'm not saying water is in the camel hump. I'm saying that on the snail, on the snorse, it looked like the snail might be harboring some some water up there. Or some glowy mm -hmm. magic Glilly. fluid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're magic. They're magic creatures. They are. The wizard was like, all right, you're a snail horse and you're a stuffed bear or a god or a god but a wizard uh, did it if snuffer if, if they can make snuffertons they can make a snorse snufferton stufferton stufferton Snuffer yeah snufferton snufferton's completely different <laughs> <laughs> don't chew tobacco kids that's not don't do it that ain't the way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, TL. Just, just <clears throat> when I get too practical, just say what Dig says. Magic. It's like, it's <laughs> high magic. magic. It's high magic. High magic. It's not even. Can't low argue because it's, it's high magic. 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 Why magic? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's two abstractions off of Lord of the Rings. You know, it's Lord of the Rings, D and D, Pathfinder, and then 
the world of Vera. So, you know, we're a few abstractions away. The the high magic is wacky now. It's fine. It's like spell yeah, jammer it's, wacky. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So and that's cool. Like that's the kind of game they're making. So talking about wacky, the other thing that came about and the toe. Gonna, You're gonna show them the toe, the toe nar, the toe. Yeah, <laughs> just the toe, just Actually, the toe. Yeah, that was that was that was funny that they were doing the you know just the toe, and then no, they actually showed us the faces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the toe nar, the toe nar. I. Oh, nice I job. like that there's um, kind of three pathways that I see sort of resolving the like primate mammalian, the sort of beastie mammalian, and then the um, sort of reptilian lizardy could potentially have some avian components as well to it. Uh, that was the other thing I was thinking about with this is, well, we know the Slaidborn mostly took to the skies. Did any of them go down here? If so, did they end up in with the mix with one of these three? Or they're also like insect Tolnar and like bird avian Tolnar or something that uh, aren't going to be playable or something. But yeah. You know, we'll see. Uh, even with these three that we have, I think it's a, a cool sort of variation that you've got one race that's it's it's a milieu of all of the greater and minor races that came together and some got with some and some got with some others and doodly do doodly do doodly do over a few millennia. And here's what we ended up with. It's uh, the slaveborn or avians that were caught in the corruption, so they did not escape. The they the the lore is that they went up to the clouds to escape the corruption, and the ancients got them. But that's what I'm wondering: is if they all did that a hundred percent, none of them went. It sounded like none of them went to uh, Sanctus, but I wonder if any of them did end up going underground. They did not. No. Okay. Well, then, wouldn't be um, Slaidborn. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and it's just Talnar are just the reptilian uh, mammalian and um, humanoid. Uh, it's not alien or insectoid. No, um, no, it's not. But, yeah. but I, I I like what we're seeing with them and. Uh, I imagine a lot of people are thinking about alts and stuff they're going to make with them. Um, I feel like we see some of the elements of some of the playable races in parts of their features and some of their facial components and, and other sorts of things. But again, this is still fairly early on with them. Um, it's I, just the toe. Yeah, this is and they weren't is, even plan they weren't even planning on showing this. I mean they had to talk each other into it. So um <laughs> Did they really or was that just shtick? Like I, I'm pretty sure they actually did, but No, well, I mean <laughs> she she said she didn't have it. They had, they had to try and find the whatever it was that they were gonna show. So That's um, true. But but um because it was good um, shtick if it was like yeah, I'd be convinced. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I like how he was like, "Don't you know when 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 this goes off, I'm going to be in so much trouble." And she's like, "I work for you. Like, yeah, you, you, <laughs> <laughs> you, you tell me what you're going to do." Um, but yeah, this is just uh, and like I was saying to Phantom this morning. It's it's just the heads, and it's probably just representing. Um, mammalian, uh, reptilian, um, and quasi humanoid in this case, kind of simian humanoid. Somebody, yeah. um, you know, it's and and just the bare basics of the, that concept is what I imagine this is. Um, someone in the forums this morning was, well, no, I think it was yesterday, was complaining about the lizard one. Most people in the forums love the lizard one. That's the one that's getting uh, the popular vote. Um, and I like it 
as well. That's probably the alt that I will make. I have five characters planned already, and now I'm probably going to make a sixth one uh, that will be that lizardy y uh, Tolnar head, at least. Um, but someone was saying that one, was, they hated it because it looks like the quintessential demon. Like, demon did not cross my mind when I looked at it. I, I, that looks I like know. the demon if your sense of design and demons came exclusively from, like, Might and Magic 4 to 7 or so. Like, I, I don't, I don't get demon there either. Yeah, they said it looked exactly like what we would expect a demon to be. It's like, oh, well, okay, that, this world's demons are actually the ancient. So, you know, it doesn't look like them. Mm -hmm. But. No, it was, it's it, it's pretty cool. And this is the clearest we've seen all we had. It's been five years since we've seen any concept art for uh, the Tolnar, and back then it was just silhouettes. Um, so I really want to understand the lore because I'm, 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 you know, you look, I look at these, and the way we know it's four major races and minor races, and so traditionally, I think you've talked about what did you convergent evolution? So like the idea that. Um, Typically, the majority will absorb the minority, but clearly in these three pictures, what would be like the only I kind of take back what I said earlier, Diggs in the chat. So um, the one to the furthest left. So I'll pop the picture back up again. I can see the Pyre and Renkai in that um, the, the furthest, the red eyes, like you can kind of see it in the horns and the, in the mouth. But the others, I'm, I'm just it's it's hard to understand where the other major you know main races fit into that so i'm just curious how we come to that as um sort of the 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 three main well, and i guess I, i'm i'm assuming these are the three main appearance i mean i guess we don't know we could certainly slide something potentially all the way over to look much more like pyre but um i'm just it's curious not, it's not that you're supposed to be able to look like a Pyre or a dwarf or a, that's not what it's meant. It just means humanoid reptilian. Yeah, but I'm still giant. curious what the, the lore, I, I would like to know yeah. how that uh, became to be, um, because they clearly have much more of sort of a beast appearance than, uh, than any of the other four races. So I'm just curious how that all played out, if that was needed because of being underground. Um, it yeah I mean it, it was that they all got together in some magical way. We have no idea who could procreate with who. Potentially everybody could procreate with everybody, and uh, over the millennia, um, uh, a small concentrated population will eventually start developing patterns and and things where they kind of come to differences that said um you're right this is one of those things where i would imagine there's a lot of lore that could be revealed um all the different peoples that that came to seek refuge for example some of them could have been more like tribal and keep to themselves and proud and like you know the 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 former um empire that the um the Ayla and the um what is it called the the elves um came from Empyrean and Pyre oh whatever the yeah the, that 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 ones. that that larger empire yeah um i could imagine them sticking to themselves within you know their own culture initially and that um over time starting to get in and around with some of the other folk or whatever but i don't know what that would mean for everyone else i i kind of see with like the the horns and the the head stuff that there's some amount of like that uh that elf influence both the um um, the Pyre, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, didn't we just see the Empyrean on that last stream? Yeah. So, 
So, you know, I, I get the feeling that that's kind of a component from them that got around to everybody a little bit. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting that they're... Um, I, I thought it made the... Um, Pyre more unique that they had branchlers and the other elves didn't have head adornments of of some sort of natural sort. These I don't really interpret why well, I'm not quite sure what I'm like. Are they supposed to be? Did they say are those like feathers or are those like pieces of chitin no. growing? No, it's not coming from the head. It's just a crown. Those are just their what their headdresses look like. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So they aren't actually. Oh, okay, okay, okay. For some reason, I thought that was actually part of their heads. No, it kind of um, looks like it at first, but no. It's just yeah. A... Okay. Well then, yeah. Well then, no. Then they're fine. He looks yeah. grumpy. Yeah, he looks. He looks, he looks grumpy. Kind of looks like a vampire. She looks like she knows something's going to happen because he's grumpy. He's been wearing he's been around uh, way too long. No, if if the lighting is looking right for me on this monitor I'm looking at here, she looks like she's been wearing, uh, in fact, maybe both of them, uh, the N95 mask and they've like been out in the sun. So they've got this like muzzle anti tattoo sort of thing or anti uh, sunburn sort of thing. Where their mouth is all like white like that. Kinda mm. kinda interesting. I don't know. I don't know why I just focus on that angle. It's just magic. like really contrasting on this monitor. They don't especially need for any, her. They don't need those masks because they got magic. <laughs> they are uh trying very hard to uh uh be reminiscent of the actor for Legolas and the hmm. Peter Jackson. Um, Lord of the Rings, I think. Yeah, I think you're probably right with that. <clears throat> then we had the Renkai, too. Um, the Renkai, oh, they just kind of tweaked them a little bit, right? They're more orky. Yeah. I feel like with the tattoos and some of the other features, they, they made them more um like pan asian um east asian sort of uh, yeah. uh features which you know that makes sense because if you look at the armor it's that red uh head to toe samurai armor with the big jade girdle on so yeah like if that's uh i i, I wasn't sure how much like getting close to real world races they were planning to do with their fantasy races. I feel like this one is kind of close enough uh, at the same time. Um, Diggs, you can tell me I'm wrong or not, but I would also say like some amount of um, more uh, African proportions compared to like what we saw for the, um, uh, the Imperians, for example. Yeah, no, I mean, these look very Asian and, you know, the the headwear that the female is wearing kind of, I really love the tattoos, actually. Yeah, the um, tattoos the are nice. As well. Um, so that's going to be kind of cool, but so problematic because that makes me want bikini wear <laughs> armor. <laughs> I want to be able to, sh well, and not so much even bikini wear, but I want to be like, have invisible chest armor so i can show it, off my it, my tattoos it goes back um, to one of the things that we've talked about a bit is why have beautiful hair and a pretty face and all of this stuff if it's all going to be hidden under armor so yeah that's definitely one of the things i'm hoping to see them address we've seen a lot of full armors and full coverage armors uh i think we've seen a bit of some stuff that shows some skin and has more uh reveal but 
Um, I, I think in terms of how skimpy you're going to be able to make the armor, I wonder if crafters are going to have a lot of control over that. And, you know, that's part of what it is, is you're just stripping off as many additional potential aesthetic parts as possible to just have like a couple straps across here and a strap across here. And it's like, all right, that's my heavy armor. No, yeah, I mean, check out, check out windows. My... <laughs> I, want, I want thigh windows. I want thigh windows and some calf windows and all kinds of stuff to show off. My you say you want boob and, windows? They talk about boob windows and they complain about those, but now I want I want thigh windows and calf windows and you know bicep windows. I want all kinds of stuff to show off my tats. No, um, why don't you just have your character wearing like? fishnets and i don't mean like you know goth girl fishnets i mean like literal fishnets with like starfish and stuff basically attached to it as like your armor pieces like that's the sort of thing i would imagine your character would wear well i just don't want any stinky fish like on the the yeah we can let you uh we can let fish cape you can uh we can let you walk around in an lg uh, refrigerator, you know, the one that lets you see the mm-hmm. inside on the out. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, there you go. Mm-hmm. Magic. Just put some cameras on the inside. Just be careful where you put them. Mm-hmm. Although, right, if this were survival, uh, not re- survival, if this was revival, where they were going to have that stank stat, um, then I might try and get the, that water you know, the stinky fish. They could, they could still have a stinky stat in this game. Don't, mm-hmm. don't discount that. Like... Mm-hmm. I, I'm <laughs> purposefully giving Ombwa ideas. Um, uh, so. You're trying to you're trying to hunt deer, and you're going out with that that mount that you know eats uh, fifty pounds of meat every day, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's not going to be aromatically stealthy. You're gonna have to mm-hmm. make sure you're um, never downwind of your quarry, otherwise. Mm-hmm. Or uh, downwind, upwind. Yeah. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. So I do think I would love for them to uh, uh, make a a, ta- a tattooing artisan and allow players to create their own designs uh, for other players to wear. Obviously, with approval, uh, there would have to be some sort of process. Um, yes, very much so. Otherwise, it. W- you know, there's exactly two things we're going to have. What? Dicks and what? Swastikas. Nah. <laughs> Swastikas perhaps out of the dicks. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Perhaps both at once. Okay. Uh, you could crowdsource oh, yeah. that. I imagine you would get some people that are very interested within the community. And the punishment, you know, well, you're, you're kicked out would be probably enough to allow some trusted community members to do it probably free or maybe some sort of bonus i don't know you get a store credit or something that'd be fun though right i think that would be pretty interesting uh i i kind of think of the way some games have done where there's a way that you make art and it goes through curation and all sorts of stuff before it finally goes in yeah you know that's the sort of thing they could be doing here for sure um I don't know how much they want to do that. They've got talented artists. And when the game launches, it's like, well, all right, games launch. Sorry. Bye. No, I don't think that's going to happen. I'm pretty sure they're going to keep producing content, 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 content in every form, art assets and tattoos and that stuff included, especially if it's one of those dragons to chase is being the tattoo collector. You've gone on all the raids. You've drank all the potions you've you know done all the stuff you've you've died once and respawned at every single node you've gotten all of the tattoo unlocks and now you you went and got it all put on and done it all in a nice glowing neon ink so you go around looking like you know tattooed tron man and you're showing off all your cool stuff you did yeah i mean i I, i'm much less interested in um player created tattoos especially since we have such a variety um already and i think that's gonna be like tons of variety um from the uh is artists um what i'm really interested what i'm really interested in is 
the magical tattoos that can adjust stats. Because um, I would kind of love it again. Like I say, I want to show off my tattoos. And I would think if, you know, Nakua Polynesian might have some tattoos that work as armor instead of gear. Um, so um, it'd be cool if you could have, you know, magical tattoos that literally work as armor. Um, I think. But. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I could see them maybe doing that for the um, the artisan system too. That instead of walking around That's in artisan saying. gear, you've got your artisan stuff tattooed on, and you know it might not necessarily be visible all the time. But when you're harvesting, you got this. You know, you're you're mining away, and these purple glows are coming out from your gauntlets. It's like. Oh, you got some uh, some mining runes going there. Yeah, nice of you to notice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I posted there. So there was a, uh, I know we're going to try to not do really questions tonight and save them for next time. But there was a question on sort of coat of arms uh, flags and the answer is there's, I thought it was interesting how he tied it into, um, I believe there will be within our sales, the opportunity <laughs> to utilize unique emblems. I'm not sure what that means um but um it's like advertising so that's going to be the brand of uh we're going to start seeing coca-cola emblems on the uh ships as they sail past kind of nascar like oh haha uh -huh. i forget what they're calling the um those symbols that they have because we have racial symbols but i forget what they're uh, uh glyph the, or whatever i yeah uh-huh and i would love to start learning some of the meanings of those um yeah because each each one has like a different set um so they should let us nascar it out i would advertise my farm you could advertise some you know you, you see a boat in the harbor and it's mentioned in some some fair little ladies uh cactus shop up in the desert over the hills i'm gonna say no. save those ideas for the metaverse <laughs> uh sigil is what i'm looking for uh they have uh. sigils and I imagine you might be using those on your sales. It seems to me those are the types of things that you might have on your sales as well. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it, I, I think about who owns a boat, what resource it takes to get a boat, and then, you know, the labeling and stuff that the owner or, you know, owning entity would want to put on it. I don't know what sort of stuff and then what other decor and stuff that they're going to be able to do with it. Uh, this always kind of brings me back to the question, and I don't know if it's going to be a fixed thing or if they might sort of budge on it a little bit. If I own a boat skin, but this person is the boat crafter, can I have them use the boat skin I own, not giving it to them to own, but use the skin I own in part of the crafting process, like maybe the confirmation step or something to use a skin I own that they don't, or would I literally have to be the person buying or building the boat to do something like that? If there's transactions involved and it sounds like skins are something that's applied afterward, it would be you just build generic boat with whatever fittings and then I apply my skin to it. Um, but then can I apply that skin to a boat and then hand it back to somebody else? And now the skin I own has been applied to a boat somebody else owns. I still own the skin on my account, but it's been, you know, applied or would that when you repackage it, would that go away? Mm -hmm. Or do you repackage it or do you build a boat and then it's out there till it gets sunk and then the insurance will respawn it and there's just boats everywhere in perpetuity that I don't think is going to be the case. <laughs> one funny thing I'm going to say real quick that's a complete tangent. This one time in Ultima Online, I found some person parked in a shadow thinking that they were hidden and sneaky and then I went into their bags and I stole their boat deed. But I could never find where they last used the boat, and you need to do that to reset <laughs> in the boat. So I just had somebody's boat deed. They lost a boat, 
uh, I couldn't use it. And eventually, somewhere else along the line, I found some random boat somebody had left somewhere, uh, got a new key for it or something, and I just got myself my own boat. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> and I had one specific bush where I would hide the key every time when I'd go into the dungeon. So if I got killed, I could go back to that bush that no one was ever going to look at and grab my key again and get my boat. That I didn't actually have the ability to consolidate because I didn't buy it and I couldn't, you know, deedify it. This ain't that kind of game. That's just some shenanigans. I'm going to go on an even further tangent. When I was in college living with my grandma, went to a party and brought back a whole bottle of champagne that I hid behind the bush in the backyard before I went inside because my grandmother had to let me in and I didn't walk, want to walk in with a full bottle of champagne. Went to class the next day and came back to pick up the champagne bottle and she said, look what I found in the backyard. Do you know anything about this wine in the back behind this bush? What are you doing looking at the bush in the back of the yard? Like, <laughs> hadn't even been 24 hours yet. <laughs> Maybe it was shiny and a raccoon knocked it over or something. It's like, what was that clatter? <laughs> oh, hey, score. <laughs> I guess. What's wrong with champagne? <laughs> no, there's nothing you wrong know, with champagne. It's just. It, I mean, you should have been old enough, right? Well, you just don't want to do that with your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm, Grandma, I'm drinking. Yeah, that's you know, I would have sat down and had a drink with her. Mm -hmm. It's not like he, you know, we're growing marijuana in the backyard or something. Mm, Bag full of shrooms. I, I had um, uh, a person that had just started to put the uh, cork um, thing and the corkscrew in the top. And uh, there was plenty of other alcohol, so I said no. She said, look, I think this is where they somebody tried to shoot the drugs <laughs> through the court. Wow. I'm going to have the police analyze it. Okay. Shoot drugs through the court. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. This is this has been a tangent brought to you by the hosts of the Theory Forge, everybody. <laughs> did you did you ever say anything? Like no, even later? I never got to never? drink that bottle. No, I Not never like got five to drink years that later. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. Wow. Mm -mm. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, that being said, it is basically about nine o'clock. Yeah. I'm excited for um seeing more about the Tolnar. Seeing more about the desert, seeing more about the tools, seeing more about the races. It feels like we're going to be seeing more about the uh, the Veiloon here pretty soon. Um, I still would very much like to see a um, the races that we have modeled in game next to each other. I have a feeling that the Dunir are still tiny and tinier than uh, they got wider, but I think they're still tiny in height. Yeah, oh, they're definitely still tiny. Um, and uh, I think people are who are who are saying, yes, I got what I wanted. I think they're going to be like, no, they're still too tiny. But so I, I want to see them, the size comparison all lined up in the game so we can see what they really look like. But um, it's fun to finally start seeing more, more, more. Well, and we'll get to questions next week, but um, it does appear that uh, Alpha 2 is probably quite a ways away, and it also does appear that Alpha 2 is going to last for probably quite a long time, um, which is good for us because we'll get to test things. But And it's good for the idea that they're actually going to be able to get a sufficient amount of feedback on how long they're going to have the system for um, season changes going. That's the sort of thing where I feel like it could warrant three to six months worth of testing to change the different intervals and see what really works and why it works and why it doesn't. And then revisit them again after people have you know tried the different range they're doing to see what works and doesn't. So oh. it's it's going to be good. And we I see think. that question was brought to you by the uh, 
effects of early access Steam titles and people no longer understanding what alpha and beta means. So we'll talk more about that next week, though. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Well, everyone, thanks for watching us. Um, we will see you here next week. And yeah, everyone have a great week. Yep. See you later, everybody. Same place, same time. Same background, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> same background.